new true crime documentary from a Madison filmmaker tells the story of a decades-old homicide in Green Bay. Tom Monfile's body was found in 1992 at the bottom of a James River paper mill pulp vat. Six of his co-workers were convicted of the crime. They were dubbed the Monfile Six. One man remains behind bars today. This new documentary explores the crime, convictions, and a big question. Were six innocent men wrongly convicted? Sarah Massler Donor sits down with the director of Beyond Human Nature. I'm here with the director of Beyond Human Nature, Michael Nielsen. Michael, thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for having me. So this film is almost a decade in the making. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the process to get this from conception to screen. With a documentary like this that's so interview heavy, uh, you know, it, it's a lot of upfront research, but you're also doing it a lot the whole way. So we started off with interviews, uh, tr in, but everyone's not available or willing right away. You have to earn their trust first, obviously, especially with a high stakes story like this. Yes. So over many years, getting all the interviews down, and then you have to raise the funds to shoot the reenactments, and then you have to raise the funds for post production. So just, you know, if it's, it's the, the fast, cheap, or good, you know, creative thing, right? If you want it to be cheap and it's going to be really good, it's not going to be fast. So, uh, yeah, almost a decade since we f started filming in May of 2014. Were there any surprises for you over that decade? Did things change? Were you going a, a one direction and then all of a sudden the investigation took a turn? Yeah, well, I mean, I was six years old when Tom was found yeah. <laughs> in Green Bay. So um, I was coming to this completely fresh. I don't yeah. remember the media coverage at the time. So every night after filming new interviews, the crew and I would sit around and just powwow about like, hey, what did we just hear? Who do we actually think we believe here? Oh, did, did that sound right? Do we, oh, you know, I believe this this guy now, I don't believe him. And it changed all the time, just based on what we were hearing. So um, it was a, yeah, a very curious uh, and open experience for us the whole way, because we really didn't go into it with a set idea of what we were hoping to find. Now, the last person who was arrested and, I guess, convicted in connection with this victim's death is up for parole this year. So do you think that your your journey with this victim is, is finished with this film, or do you think there's more to do here? Uh, I think we're done. Um, you know, we've told the story, and that's what we set out to do. Um, it's going to be fascinating to see what happens with Keith Kutzka, who's yeah for parole this year. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be watching closely, obviously, but we didn't make the film to enact any sort of change in any way with him, really. Um, it was more just about telling the story to a new audience that, like myself, wasn't aware of it as much. Obviously, mm -hmm. you go to Brown County now, still like on the street, you talk to anybody, they know and they have opinions and everything. Um, but, you know, as it's going to be back in the news this year, it felt like a story that if you're from Wisconsin, if you live in Wisconsin, you should be aware of it because for 30 years now, it's been a huge part of the state's lore. Now, this film, just kind of to wrap up here, is is part of, you know, a, a video and production company that you started with your dad, and now it's receiving all this attention, all these accolades. How does it make you feel? Very good. I mean, it's, it's validating that, you know, all the blood, sweat, and tears, hours that have gone into uh, keeping Story First Media going and, and, and doing great work for all our clients and doing these documentaries that we do, um, it's all worth it in the end. You know, when you, when you put it up on screen in front of a crowd or when it gets distributed nationwide like this is going to be now, um, it's really cool that, uh, you know, that's, a, that's every filmmaker's ultimate dream is that you just get the largest possible audience looking at it. And given that this is a fully Wisconsin story shot by Wisconsinites entirely in Wisconsin and now the nation's going to get to see it, that's just a cool, unique thing. And really quickly here, how can the nation see it? When does it come out and how can they access it? So you can pre-order it today, but starting May 2nd, uh, you can watch it on demand on any digital platform where you buy or rent movies. So Amazon Prime, Apple Movies, you name it. Excellent. So very widely available for all of us in Wisconsin and across the country to Absolutely. just dig our teeth in a true crime. It's huge right now. Absolutely. Okay, Michael, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me.